Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the New Art School and Design Deducts Podcast. Our guest today is Bill Mazza. Welcome, Bill. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Great. Fantastic. So tell us about you and your work. Well, I do something a little bit different. I'm a creative director. Uh, that's how I began. And uh, within that realm of doing creative direction for a bunch of companies in Europe, predominantly, because I've been working in Italy, uh, I was invited one time to start teaching a course in design thinking, creative thinking, at the European Institute of Design in, in Rome, Italy. Funny enough, you say to yourself, the first thing you say to yourself is, how do you teach creative thinking? Actually, what you're doing is you're teaching a mind to open up and do it. And it's not an easy question. And there's no really easy answer. So what, so what I did was I remembered how uh, my father, my father in America, I'm, a, I'm from America, he worked at the Pentagon and he was working in the defense intelligence. And we didn't know what he did. Uh, he had sensitive clearance. And my mother was an artist. She was a painter. And I always tried to, my father never talked in the house. And I always tried to imagine, what if my father was to paint a painting? And what if my mother was to design a defense system? So at that point, I started thinking about that, trying to understand exactly what it may look like, a picture, a painting by my father that doesn't know anything about art, and the same thing. That being said, I created this, um, in art school, a way of thinking, a way of creating ideas. And um, I have seven methods that I teach and implemented well at the, at the art schools and stuff. So I teach the mind how to think of something they can't imagine. That's a big question. That's an amazing question. <laughs> when you say that to kids, they go, you know, and really think about it. Uh, like another good line that I use is like a navigator for the car. Um, you know, a navigator will take you to any road you've never heard or seen or anything like that. But how do you program a road you've never seen? That's the question. So my theory, I have a theory called the imagination method and the imagination theory. And my theory is based on distraction. I also do um, projects at Harvard University with Dr. Langer in the psychology department, and we're creating these mindful, um, mindful instruments to teach business people how to creatively think using mindfulness. Um, how it works is this. You know, distraction, you got to get 90% of these kids don't know, don't know how to create because in the schools, what they do is they tell you what to think about, but they don't tell you how to think about it. They don't give you a reason. They don't give you a pattern or structure or anything. And that's where all these other things like critical thinking, forward thinking, lateral thinking, out of my box thinking, they all are teaching um, methods that are structured with a, with a set, set of rules, set of regula regulations. So um, again, how can you imagine, how can you think of something? Well, if you want to create, like Thomas Jefferson had said one point, president, he said that if you want something you've never had, you have to do something that's never been done, right? Otherwise it's going to happen. So how do you tell somebody to think like, uh, to explore their mind and think crazy? You just, okay, so the problem is this, basically, everybody has a lot of stuff going on in their minds. They have... The, your daughter's got to graduate college. You got to pay the rent. There's a car loan out there. Somebody's happy. My mother's sick. And there's so many things. So if you tell somebody to start creating an idea, what happens is they start to think and they get to the first, first stop sign. says, oh my God, I got to remember that. And blah, blah, blah. It's back. And that's why people say to themselves, I'm not a creative person because they don't know how to get out of that, of that web. They don't know how to do it. And it's basically, my, my theory pr predicts, it's about distraction. So now imagine that guy there with all these things going on in his mind. And all of a sudden he finds out his father died. Well, when his father died, boom, he's out. Everything is not important. What's happened is he's had a strong sense of focus, an extreme sense of distraction, and now his mind is engaged. His engagement, which is part of mindfulness, and the engagement, now that he's engaged, we can do anything we want because he's got everything going on. He doesn't have anything to worry about. 
So how do you apply that to creative thinking? Well, I have a method that I distract people with. I keep, 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 keep them off guard. For example, um, let's think about designing a product, product design. Well, an architect, when he designs a product, he's got to think of stuff. He's got to think of stuff like colors, shapes, forms, textures, all kinds of things that normally, you know, he thinks about by himself. He's got it. And we're talking about people. Um, so, so anyway, so what I do is I have, um, I create a chart and I list these categories, colors, shapes, forms, materials, patterns, textures. And I list a bunch of different things under each one. So I create a chart is what I do. Then what I do is I out of, you know, just randomly, I hit one word in every column. Usually you have to have somebody that doesn't know anything about, let him do that. And you get a series of hot words of these words. You got one color, one shape, one form. So my first class I did at the European Institute of Design in Rome, marketing, first year students in there, I called up one of the girls, Martina. Martina, I says, come up to the front of the class. So she came up to the front of the class, first day of university. And then she, I said, Martina, if you had to create a coffee cup, how'd you do it? And she says, oh, I don't know. And these are the first, first days of the university. So I said, well, uh, what color would it be? And she said, oh, white. Oh, good. I said, why white? She says, well, white, because most of the coffee cups are white. See, in her mind, she was assigning some sort of an analytical reasoning to why a coffee cup could be white. And that's part of the game. So I says, well, what would it look like, the shape? So she says, she goes like this with the hands. I said, what, is that? what does that mean, round? She goes, well, not really. So I said, well, tell me about it. And it ended like that. Okay, because she's got other stuff going on. So what we did was we took out this chart that I had and we assigned these words. And uh, we we're gonna design a coffee cup that was in pyramid shape. It was blue, it was made out of cement. It was very angry. These are the words that came out. So I said to Martina, okay, come up in the front of the class. Take a look at that chart. Take a look at these hot words. I'll give you two minutes of thinking time and you're gonna tell us about the coffee cup. Well, <laughs> you're talking about 25 Romans in, in Rome, first year of university. It's not an easy thing to break through. She gets up in front of the class. She looked at the words. She started thinking. She got nervous. She was sweating. She then stands up in front of the class. She silences the class. And she says, imagine the coffee cup. We know a coffee cup is being small and on a table. But who says it has to be small and on a table? At that point, I got a series of goosebumps <laughs> running up my arm because she connected, she got it, she got it. So then she said, I'm gonna tell you about the coffee cup. Now this coffee cup we're talking is, is in a pyramid shape. So I says to Martina, I said, Martina, why would it be in a pyramid shape? And she goes, well, most coffee cups are in a pyramid shape, if you'll really look at them. And I said, I says, why? And she said, well, we got a nose and maybe to smell the coffee, it's gonna be a little bit bigger at the top. Ow. Great, man, she, she just assigned an, an, a reason in her own mind why it could be. So then the next thing was, was made out of cement. Cement, and now these are conceptual starting points, you did not finish campaign. So she says, well, cement doesn't conduct heat. Ah, I says, oh, Martina. So if it doesn't conduct heat, maybe we don't have to use handles. She says, that could be an idea. And this is how I got people out of the whole thing um about you're you're assigning a reasoning to why these random elements could be and the results are phenomenal and some of the things that come out i could talk from here until tomorrow afternoon about really what this thing coffee cup looks like um i do have you know illustrations of it so that's what i teach i provoke them not only i provoke them i distract them with these weird elements i mean if you had to design a couch that was made of cast a cast iron it was fluorescent yellow it had paisley texture <sighs> your mind says wow what's going on what's that but you immediately engaged and that's the whole trick of getting it 90 percent of the kids more or less that's not a statistic but more or less when i ask anybody how how many people are creative in the class? 
I don't see one hand jump up because they don't know how to think. So there is a structure to this thing. And I, with my methodology, I use these structured ways of, of making, getting the kids out of their minds. That's fantastic. That's, that's really, really good. Um, so you seem to have answered a lot of questions at the same time. I guess I did. I maybe I talked too much. That's a problem I have. Excuse me, I'm Italian. I didn't want to, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, but uh, yes, it, well, we've also adopted it. Like it was funny because the first day of class, one of the lessons, I had one of these guys in my class, Umberto, I remember his name, Umberto. And I says, Umberto says, hey, prof, he says, he was, he was a rapper, you know, he says, hey, prof, what do I got for homework tonight? And I said, Umberto, what do you mean? There's no, he says, well, what do I got to do for homework? So I says, listen, you're going to answer me two questions next time you come into class. He says, what? He says, well, if you could eat the musical note ray, as in do, ray, me, you got to tell me what it tastes like. And if you could hear the color red, you tell me what it sounds like. We're going to have a, what, next, next time we see each other, bring me those two things. He goes, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but I mean, and that's what you do. It's polysensory. So, uh, and it does make you think. And funny saying that, I did every class I begin with, I asked that question. If you could eat the musical note, Ray, what would it taste like? Yes. And no one answered. And until my, one of my last classes, the first day, the girl raises a hand. I said, oh my God, what's going on here? Oh my God, oh my God. But it was so, so she said, um, I know what the musical note Ray tastes like. And I said, oh really? Well, let's go. Can you tell me about it? She goes, she stands up in front of 20, 30 people. She says, Do is the first note. That's a proud note. It's a clairvoyant note. It comes out, boom, bang, Do. It comes flying out like that. Ray is on the way to me. And Ray lives in the shadow of Do. It's like the little brother. And I think that it tastes bitter. I got goosebumps all up my arms when I heard that. And that she got it. She was able to sign a reasoning why to something like that, which was extremely difficult. And that girl, she did get trenta low. That she got, she got the highest mark in the class at the end because I'll. And I graded her on that first statement that she made. But she was able to, you know, uh, get out there and say these things. But and that's what I teach: teach kids how to think. Fantastic! Fantastic. This is a really, really interesting. So tell us, what are the projects that you're working on right now? Right now I'm doing, well, I do everything. That's the problem I have. Uh, I do everything. Um, right now I'm doing a lot of corporate identity in the United States here in Boston. Um, I'm doing, oh, I got, yeah, four or five, we're all lawyers and legal people. It's crazy stuff, but we're having a good time with it. And I'm also doing, uh, I've opened up this academy, this uh, floating academy, which I call the Think Academy which is actually an academy, it's in a box, it's in a box. And inside are, are 10 workshops that are all creative thinking, visual awareness workshops. Um, and so I'm, I'm planting this, this, this Think Academy in different places in the, in the, in the world right now. That's what I'm doing, my, one of my missions. I also work with Dr. L Dr. Langer at Harvard University at, um, um, and we're doing these, uh, she's a psychologist, very famous, got 13 books out and she teaches mindfulness. And we're creating corporate training tools to teach people, entrepreneurs, business people, how to mindfully think using the five senses. And this is a call, it's called Fire Five, which is a really cool program. And we're just getting it off the ground now. And what happens is I give them a big polyhedral multifaceted dice. Okay. And this is a wooden dice. And the sides, the 20 sides are all textures, different types of textures. So what the businessman does is he puts a blindfold over his face. He then touches one of the textures and he has to imagine a product. He has to name the product, put down a business plan and, 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 and just by the sense of touch. And we do this project with other things, with the sense of taste, where there are a series of gourmet lollipops that you taste and you start talking. It's a polysensoral tool, but gets people to mindfully think uh, and, and to create with my methodology. We're doing these types of interesting tools um, it, with her. And uh, we have a little a coalition we've created at, at Harvard. And we're doing um, 
oh, all, all kinds of other things as far as you know, teaching. I'm doing online teaching now uh, in different parts, which uh, is quite an adventure. I, I just started in, went in China today. And that was a real adventure because you have uh, an interpreter with you, you know, and, and with that interpreter, it's, you know, you, you got, you got to give it time, you know, <laughs> but it was very, very good. It's funny because, um, and I enjoy it now, thanks to COVID because COVID did a lot of bad, but it also did a lot of good in a certain way. It's enabled people to think differently. Now we're in the problem is now in America, anyway, in Boston, where I live, is that COVID is just starting to get skin a little bit easier. They're opening up things a little bit. But so what happens is we learned one point in time to think. We had to learn to think. Then when COVID hit, we had to learn how to rethink. And now we have to learn how to rethink the rethink to get back to the think. <laughs> kind of a weird situation. I mean, it's enabled people to think so differently. And now we're starting to get back into the thing a little bit. So we're gonna to have to start rethinking again, how to rethink that to think again. You see, so I say to people, and I say a lot of, you know, you know, it's important to learn how, learning how to think. Today, the world is all about thinking. A company, for example, uh, you know, are looking for people to create new ideas. They're looking for new ideas. And the reason why is because if they have a new idea, they don't have a competition. Because what usually happens is most of these companies who don't have ideas and people that have that way of vision, they take their ideas, what they have, whatever, and they, with marketing maneuvers, they try to get them out there with price differences or offers or promotions. And basically, but if you don't have an idea, if you have a new idea, you don't have to worry about all that. Yeah. So that's the importance of, of learning, I feel, creative thinking. How has distance teaching affected your multisensory teaching? How do you how do you go through that? How do I go through the multi-sensory? How do I how do I poly? Well, one well, basic. Oh, yeah, with Zoom. You yeah, mean? How do you get the multi-sensory teaching via Zoom? We're still learning that. <laughs> <laughs> We're still learning how to teach online because it was funny because I started teaching now I'm online with the the Cambridge Center um, Creation Lab in in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And this was my first idea of the, the world has completely changed. I mean, I don't like it, but you got to get used to it and join the program if you want to do this today, because I'm a, I'm a hands on guy. I like to have like the 35 kids from the, in the class moving around, swearing, screaming, yelling and touching. I like that kind of stuff here. It's a different thing. Um, and I don't polysensory teaching like this is kind of hard. I mean, you know, like you. It's very difficult. It's a different world. It's a different teach right now. I don't think it's going to be for much longer. I think that within probably about another six months to a year, we should be getting back a little bit. But um, this is the way things are right now. So the answer to the question is that uh, uh, it's, it's not an easy teach. It's a different teach. How do you see uh, teaching with increasing automation and AI coming on, oh, no, I don't, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be leaving the planet. But <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't my world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what happens is you know through the course of a lifetime and all these adventures and stuff. And I've been through a lot of different types of things in, in Europe and Italy and stuff like that. And with working with unbelievable people, and you, I look back on that and I said, oh my god, where did all that go? I mean, what's going on? I mean, where is that today? And you, you, you know what you got to do? You got to stop thinking like that. Because once you start thinking like that, you say that I'm an old man. Like, you, you know, you heard the older people when you were little saying things were better back then. Yeah, well, you know what? I feel myself saying that. And every time I open my mouth to start, I they say, stop. You got to cut it out. We are not, you know, because otherwise you're classifying yourself as an old man here. But you got to, it's, it's so different. And is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. I really don't even know. I'm just going to go with the flow and just keep pushing it down the street because it's, uh, it's, it's very different. Sure. Sure. How, how, how though do you, do you, what would be your advice for, for people that are looking into go into employment and oh. have, to, have to go straight into freelance because of distance, distance working. Right. Well, before they go anywhere, they should go to the church and get a blessing because from then on, it's going to be put. No, well, getting back to that, to, to prepare these 
people to yeah. get get out there. Um, I tell you know it's funny. Kids go to school, art schools, and colleges, and what they go fashion. I want to do fashion. I want to do this. I want to do this, and they start going down that little rabbit hole and getting so good at what they do, and all of a sudden. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I got to go into ceramics or something else. <laughs> so I tell them, I says, the most important course to teach is how to think. Because once you know how, and once you really have a really cool way of doing it, you can go into any sector you want. I mean, I love cross-sensing, meaning, you know, work for fashion, take some of the fashion stuff and bring it into to technology yeah. and changing gears and changing methods. But you got to know how to think and you got to know how to do it. And if you don't, it's a mess. It's, a, it's people go, oh, I got to go back to school. You don't have to go back to school. You should just learn how to think. The only course that they probably should give in the university is how to think, but they don't. Now, well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. There are in some of the uh, you know, higher education uh, areas, there, there are uh, critical thinking, creative thinking. High school, there isn't, though. I mean, where I'm noticing. And it should be fundamental. They don't tell you how. They don't tell you how to think. They tell you what to think about. You know, think about this, think about that. Oh, really? Well, how am I going to think about it? Nobody does. They don't do that. And that's, I, I feel, uh, is the most important thing to learn. Once you know how to create, you can sit down at any meeting table, any brainstorm table. You Absolutely. Can... Absolutely. So which brings us to our next question. If you had the magic wand, would you, would you, how would you do education differently? How would you really sort of change education physically or virtually or in, in any way you'd like? Well... Well, I guess, um, meaning that if I was to, uh, <clears throat> if there were well, no limitations I, and you and you're seeing the challenges right now, uh, no, well, then, but that's 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 simply said. You I'll could just go like more. that and and do it differently. What what would you do? Nothing, quite frankly, because the way I teach these kids is I teach them to become thinkers mm -hmm. and really, really how to think in all different ways. I mean, if, if your father was a color, what color would he be? You know, if my brother was a song, what song would he sing? These types of, uh, you know, out of context associating between elements and stuff like that. And then if I was to, if you, if you were to advertise sweaters through the sense of touch, well, if you could hear the sweater, what would it touch like? These types of polysensory things. I think people are, are stuck on most of the time. I shouldn't say this, this is a generalization, but I'm going to say it anyway. How's that? I think they're stuck on traditional ways of doing things. When you go into a meeting, they say people open up their agendas and their notebooks and say, okay, we have to give, a, give us a brief. Tell us about this stuff. Forget it. Don't, me tell, don't tell me anything about your product. I don't want to know. And that, in fact, I worked a lot in the wine world, uh, wine, wine development and stuff and uh, branding and marketing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because when you, you know what, I don't want to know all about the regulations. Let me think, what is it, a red wine? It's kind of cool. Let me think about it. And I bring them back to the table, things that they, they're not ready for, unprepared. So again, it's all about distraction. It's about hitting them in, in the wrong way. And I believe that that's, I believe the way that I teach creative thinking that anybody that I've seen my students come out and they're brilliant. I mean, they're brilliant. I mean, um, and they all like it. They're not ready for it. I mean, I take my, I take these, these polyhedral dice that I have here and I throw them around the class like basketballs and I got uh, all kinds and shapes, about 10 of them. And you should see what goes on. And they don't know what's going on. They're having a great time. They don't even know what they're doing. They, they don't realize they're going to be getting a piece of science down there, but they don't feel it. And I, again, the best way of saying it is that once you know how to think, you can do anything. That's that's the way I believe it. I wouldn't teach it any. I wouldn't teach it any other way. But. How can our viewers and listeners find you? Uh, find, well, they can find me at number one. You can find me on my website if you want. Uh, it's being updated. I think everybody says that. So just you know, it's it's a little rock and roll right now. But yeah, my website it's williammaza.com, and you can find me there. William williammaza.com. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Oh my God, bow down to Facebook, right? Facebook, my profile, William Mazza, and I have Mazza Creative Direction, which is another one of my pages. Then what else we got going? I'm on LinkedIn. I just started kind of LinkedIn because it looked kind of, it looked kind of cool, you know, it looked kind of. <laughs> so I'm on LinkedIn, uh, William Mazza again. And um, that's where, here I am, you know, uh, email, Mazza at WilliamMazza.com. That's another way of reaching me. Probably the best kind of in a way. 
And to tell you the best of all, just give me a call. We can have a conversation because Absolutely. talk is the best. It doesn't. Uh, yeah. What advice you would like to leave us with? Again, go to the church down the corner and get a blessing, everybody, because <laughs> I'm just saying the best advice again, really, and, and um, for, for, for who actually for anyone? Uh, for, for students that are out there trying to yeah, for the students for the for the, for the lecturers <laughs> for the poor lecturers <laughs> for the poor no poor lecturers they're okay they know what they got to say right i mean they say things that people don't want I, but they know exactly what they got but uh i would say for the students basically it's you know when a kid's there in high school he doesn't know what he wants to do this is my way of doing it now that i have two kids my kids are big i don't you know get away from me whatever and uh you know and when a kid goes to high school you know they get and they finally get there, they should give them an automatic six month period wait. We're gonna figure a life out here. We just went through 12 years of education. Just calm down, everybody chill out. Let's get a glass of chamomile tea and just chill out for six months. We're gonna do a lot of things. We can go traveling, we can go here. After six months, then you should make a decision if you wanna to go to college. You wanna to go to college? Okay, but you should be going to a community college, forget the big name, big label stuff right away. I don't believe in it because these kids aren't, some kids have that focus, that's extreme sense of focus. But then again, when kids are too focused, it's the same thing as that when I'm gonna go to school and be a fashion designer and then they wanna change, change gears later. Sometimes it's better to be exposed to the city schools that you have everything out there. Figure out, is this university stuff what I wanna do and stuff like, and then after that six month period goes by the next year, focus time to make a decision but give yourself some time my daughter regina she's in firenze florence and stuff like that she's really creative but she got from peer pressure she started to go into pharmaceuticals i said regina i said this is you whatever babo leave me alone Don't, leaves i know what i want to do good well all of her girlfriends they go to pharmaceuticals she got her degree she's got her master's when she was there the last year, the fifth year, she said, Babo, she says, Daddy, she says, I don't want to do this anymore. I said, oh, my God, Regina. She says, so I, what are we going to do here? I mean, I, you can't do that. You got to finish your degree. So I went to, I brought her to the, to the European Institute of Design in Rome. She loved it, but she had to start all over again at that point because the credits wouldn't transfer. So that one year gap period maybe is an important thing. Lots of mothers and fathers probably want to send their kids, get them involved in the school and get going. But listen, if they chill out for one year and they figure out life, I think that it's an important, important lesson. Thank you so much for the wonderful conversation. Uh, Thank you. It was fantastic. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you at our Design Education Forum in November. And so... Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay.